hockey. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite. It's Judd's Hockey Show. Judd's Hockey Show. It is indeed, and you are about to see the many faces of JHS. That's right. Four strong. It's Judd. It's AJ Fredrickson. It's Declan Goff. It's Jesse Pierce. It uh, It is a show in which we try and collectively really put into place where this team is now on a long break. Um, not that the playoffs were a possibility, guys, but I'm sure you've seen the scores in the past couple days. The, um, the Golden Knights and Blues played on, what, Sunday? They go into overtime. Golden Knights win, so that's two points for the Golden Knights, one for the Blues. Then the Golden Knights play yesterday against Nashville. They go into overtime. Golden Knights lose, but they still get a point. Long story short, um, the Wild has 11 games left and is no longer in any way, shape, or form in control of where they are going. So here's my question to kick this show off. Jesse, we'll start with you and go around the room. In these remaining games, what do you want to see from this team? Like, like realistically, as far as what you think can be uh, can be taken uh, 10 games left after tomorrow against the Sharks, what do you want to see from this team to sort of make you feel good about it going into the offseason? I think we talked about it last week. I want to see some of these young guys. I want to see who's nets off. I want to see Adam Beckman in there. I want to see more from Jake Lucchini and Mason Shaw. I want to see these young kids and see what they can really, really do. I know they've been busy signing ELCs, most of them which start next year. That's all fine and well. Um, and I just want to see an effort. I will give Minnesota props. I know we've been very critical of them, obviously, in the entire season, but even as of late in their inconsistencies. But at least they have been trying. There have been many games, with the exception of last week against L.A. and another dud in Nashville. They've been putting that effort forth, and they've been trying to control what they can. So I will give them credit for that. Since the All-Star break, they've been a much better team. But ultimately, I want to see the young kids play as much as possible. And as much as I want to win and have Marc-Andre Fleury be my number one, I want to see Gus maybe a little bit more. Mostly because I want to analyze and see what he can do. Is he truly back to the old Philip Gustafson, or is he trending more toward the Ottawa Philip Gustafson, where that was a flash in the pan? I think that's going to be important, because then that leads your conversations heading into the offseason. So I'm looking at goalies, and I'm looking at the young kids. Those are my two keys heading into the final uh, 10 or 11 games here. I would say tank as much as possible. (laughs) That's what I want to see. I want to see you drive this into the ground. And I get what Jesse's saying to the point of, hey, it actually would be nice to maybe see more of Gus if maybe you can figure out if he can have a little bit more in the tank here and you maybe up his trade value by by the summertime. But I I would be trying to get the best possible draft picks at at this point. Put yourself in a position where you don't go on a meaningless run because at this point you are really out of it. You needed help when we talked last week about, you know, all right, you can get about – 70% 70% of the points, and you get a little bit of help. You can probably sneak in the playoffs. Well, after this last seven days, it's really behind the eight ball. So going on a meaningless run uh, for just bleeps and giggles doesn't do a whole lot for you going forward. So lose, lose, but lose competitively. Lose, but lose competitively. That's where I'm at. I would say I want to see a message sent, and this kind of goes off of Jesse's point where yeah, I want to see the younger guys play. But with that, don't be afraid to send a message and bench one of these guys that have been underperforming, maybe showing a lack of effort here, a la Marcus Johansson. I know he had that kind of rambunctious game where he got a talking to, and he had a, he had the opening goal for the Wild against the Blues this past weekend. But I see about half an hour ago, um, lines come out from practice today, and Marin Husnadinov and Mason Shaw are working in on that fourth line. Why is Husnadinov working into that fourth line in these final 10 or so games of the season? I want to see him displayed so we know what there is with him. Get him acclimated, and it starts now. You can, you know, you have the whole offseason to tinker and, and see what else he's got and maybe grow his game, but he's just so green. Get him some, get him some minutes right now, and that's by putting him at least in the top nine, as we've seen. But uh, frankly, get him in the top six if, if you can. Get a guy like Marcus Johansson up in the press box. Get them on the golf course a little earlier than most. I don't care. And Jess, what what was that? Because I, I saw that then Hines came out post practice and said Hustadinov is still in the lineup. So what are we doing here? Can you tell I don't us? know. I I mean, <clears throat> I think you'll probably see Adam Beckman come out if if anything. But the problem is that Adam Beckman Lucini line has been so good because they had and Mason Shaw too because that's that yeah. Iowa line, right? Like they have that predetermined chemistry from having played before down in Iowa. Um, I agree wholeheartedly with AJ. I even said that on this week's bar down. If 
Once Erickson X back, who comes out? It's Marcus Johansson, without question. I don't even have to pause. I don't even have to stutter to make that decision because he does. He needs that message sent. I can't watch him play. I can't watch him lollygag on the ice anymore. That's the problem. Like, I choose him over Freddie Goudreau because at least Freddie Goudreau yeah. tries. He tries his darndest, and I can appreciate that. But, yeah, the lines itself, the way it looks, who's Nadinov and Shaw are your odd men out, which... You know, you could argue, too, has Marat shown enough to warrant him staying in there? Probably not quite. He's been fine, right? His first game was really good uh, with four block shots, and he won a couple faceoffs, but he hasn't been put necessarily in the situations that warrant him to get highlighted. But, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens tomorrow at Morning Skate and who is the Amen out. My hunch still says Adam Beckman comes out because, again, the expectation for Marat is to be better. So Beckman should be the odd man out, not Marat, but we'll see. Well, yeah, and j- just, and I believe he was a minus three, if I'm not mistaken, on Saturday against the Blues, you guys. But Marat b- didn't play, I don't think, in the third period. If he did, it was very briefly. They, they like, started to double shift, guys. They're-, they're acting like they're still, like, on the precipice of a playoff berth, which very much confuses me. 7.4%, Judd. Yeah, but, but like, but still, <laughs> like, Jesse, you're exactly right. Play the kids. Um, what I would like to see is I... I would like to see if, if it has not started in these last uh, 11 games, I would like to see the wild go to work on our plan. And I believe age and I talked about this a lot on our last show, which is, you know what, Jesse, I'm with you play Gustafson to showcase him. Hopefully he plays well. The more I think about this, I would really like to see Wallstead and flurry next year and Wallstead. You just find out about, cause like this is going to be year three of, of Wallstead being in the States. It's going to need to play like this whole thing of, well, he's not ready yet. Okay. That's cool. But now he is. And I think I can't think of a better guy to pair him with than flurry. Like Gustafson's still going to expect to play if Wallstead's here. And Gustafson's a fine guy. He's turned a little more wonky. I think as things have gone bad, like he's showing a little bit more of goaltender stripes, which is, which is a goaltender. That's fine. But you know, flurry seems to be still enjoying the game. Playing pretty well at times. He's not great, but he's playing pretty well. And I think he'd be a marvelous two to a goaltender who you got to find out about. So my thing is grease the skids to get Flower back here for one more year. I think he wants to come back. He strikes me as he's having a great time. So that's my thing. All right, before we get to question two, a shout out to our, our new partner at Nicolay Law. Nicolay Law, not Law, knows that when you or a loved one uh, gets injured, ordinary life can come to a stop and things can get complicated. During that time, insurance companies are likely to pressure you. They don't care if you get better. They don't care if your medical bills are piling up. They don't care what you may not be that you may not be able to work. But Nicolay Law does. They have seen every play the insurance companies have, and they'll drop their gloves to make sure you get the compensation you deserve after an accident. So if you've been injured, get Minnesota's local award-winning injury lawyers. Get Nicolay. Start your path to winning now. NicolayLaw.com. One eight five five Nicolay. N I C O L E T Nicolay Law uh, dot com has the answers for you. Speaking of answers, oh, I believe we've lost. Have, have we lost Jesse on on air production meeting? Uh we. I ha, I saw a double, like a, a twin of Jesse yeah, pop up she, down below, and then one dipped out. So I think, I think we she are. Froze. That husband. It's it's her husband's fault. We talk yep. about it all the time. I it's know, her husband's he's fault. One, he's the one that said, "Let's change." The web service, they were Xfinity, which I am. And yes, it's incredibly expensive. But man, you know what? It's high speed. It's high speed. All right, let's continue the show then with the three of us for now. How would you, Declan, how would you describe, because the, the Wild, to, in fairness to them, is still in cap hell. Like, yep. I don't think there was anyone expecting them to win a cup. Quite frankly, they might have o- overachieved in the regular season the past couple of years. How would you describe this season as it winds down? I would while. describe it as a, a transitional year. I, I, I That's kind of how I would look at it. I think it's a transitional year for them. So they got one more year of buyout hell uh, to deal with, and th- that's where my tanking for draft position is the best thing here. If you can start building up and getting even more of a head start on those prospect buildings, so by the time, you know, this time next year, we're talking about, all right, finally the books are opening up a little bit. You can start yielding a better roster. You know, the fact you said overachieve, and I, I don't use overachieve, and I don't think you were either as a negative thing. The fact they were able to be an incredibly competitive team with an 18% burden against their cap while other teams don't have an 18% burden is an incredible testament to what Garen and what the entire staff was able to do. And yes, it's a, it's a missed opportunity, and that stinks. 
but I would I would trans I would label this as your transition year. And it's probably going to be transitional year 2.0, you know, going into next season. I wouldn't expect anything more of this team going into next year. And that's why I would like to have you kind of jumpstart some of that process by getting the best draft picks possible. Jess, the, the question is, how would you describe with 11 games left this season for the Wild? Frustrating, right? I had very low expectations, but the inconsistencies are so frustrating to watch. I didn't expect them to have a phenomenal year. I think they've overexceeded expectations the past couple seasons. Um, obviously, everything. The injuries, you can't you know, negate that either. They have not been able to be healthy. I don't think Kirill Kaprizov has been able to play with a fully healthy lineup himself. Um, so, I mean, that's certainly frustrating. So it's it's hard to watch. Um, but the biggest problems that I have, the problematic things I'm seeing are the inconsistencies in the players that shouldn't be being inconsistent, T- trying to find that groove, the no-show games that you have against, as we'd mentioned, the LAs and the Nationals. That cannot happen next year. And you need to have a quicker start. You need to have a better start. They put themselves way too far behind the eight ball and dug themselves too big of a hole. I know people can often say November hockey doesn't matter. October hockey doesn't matter. Well, Sure as heck would help right now, wouldn't it? So I think they definitely need to get their wheels in gear much, much earlier next year. Um, and yeah, I think it's best to look forward to next year and see where that leads us. What do you think, Gage? I would say puzzling. I'm left with a lot of questions and feels like I'm like, there's always a question that I have in my mind. Why are they not working hard enough for Dean Evison? Why is it all of a sudden you fire your coach and you bring in a John Hines and you go on this incredible run and now hey, why, why is it that we're shuffling the lines up and now you're, you're bringing a guy like Kuznadinov in and you're not necessarily giving him the time that maybe you want to give him? Or why is Marcus Johansson still getting top six minutes in you know late January? It, a, a questions after questions, I feel like. And to Dex's point, transitional, I think, is probably the right the term here that hits the nail on the head because when you look at it, the final 11 games, right now they ha- would have, if nothing shakes up, the 14th pick in the NHL draft. But the thing is they sit with 77 points. There's only a handful of points and they could potentially get back up into that top 10 conversation. And then who knows where the draft lottery falls. And that's where these next 11 games Dex is spot on. You want to lose, but you want to do it competitively with that, with that message of we're still trying. We still have that culture that Bill Guerin wants to establish. We still have that Minnesota wild grit first mentality, but you know what helps with that mentality better players and better prospects. So that's where you have to lose and get up and then just, you know, you get a little lucky. Never hurts anybody. You get a little lucky. Yeah, help us out, NHL. Give us the ding. Win us the lottery. Okay, rig, us, rig, it, rig it for us for once. How about that? Gary, we'll better, I, I know you're watching. No. Yes. Oh, I'm sure the Sharks would take that. You know, the Sharks and Blackhawks oh my God, and Ducks, it's, it's been an incredible battle of horse bleep. Like, when yeah. you look <laughs> at what they're doing, it's really impressive. In, in fact, um, I think I read a, a couple of days ago, Luke... Richardson, the Blackhawks coach, bag skated them because they played so poorly. I was like, what are you talking about, Luke? Your team's doing you a favor. They're trying to get you celebrating with Bedard. My God, it'd be great. Um, I'll try and go with a uh, positive here. I'm going to go with learning. Learning experience. Not necessarily for the players. Bill Guerin, John Hines, to a certain degree. Um, I think what you've learned here is, is it feels like Bill has fallen a little bit into the culture that Fletcher did which is I've built my veterans and my veterans, I'm going to keep my veterans. There's nothing worse I've decided in life than comfortable hockey players. <laughs> you know, I, I can't be traded, honey. I'm home for dinner. Well, shouldn't you be going and skating more or working out? No, they can't trade me. Um, it feels like we're going back into that. And I hope that it's evaluated. You know, I mean, Marcus Johansson's robbed this team blind. He has walked, he walked into the X with a ski mask on. He broke the lock and he's robbed them blind. And, you, you know, you look at all of those contracts, and we've talked about this a lot, you know, but all of those contracts, and I'm not saying like Felino might, might have been fine, but when you're giving those contracts out, right? Like, first of all, there's young talent coming up. So, like, let's, to, to Jesse's point, let's play that young talent. Let's find out. Perhaps they suck, but let, let's find out. And then, you know, you've got Goudreau locked in here, who was the teacher's pet of Dean. And, and I'm, again, I agree with Jesse. I don't think Goudreau is like taking nights off. I just don't think he's any good. Mm-hmm. And so I'm hoping that, you know, Bill Guerin is a hard ass, but he's also, I think, a very sympathetic person. And I, I feel like he likes these guys. He like he wants to like them. And that's not your job. Your job is to make tough decisions. So 
I hope from a grand point of view that this is a learning experience of you're going to have to make, like, you can't keep everybody, can't give them all no trades. And in some cases, if Freddie Goudreau's agent calls and says, well, he might walk, you got to say, okay, he might walk. Let's find out. Ryan Hartman, I'm the third guy. When's my contract coming? Ryan, it's not. We're sorry. You know? Like, like I know it sounds like I'm being a, a jackass, but it feels like we're falling back into that trap. And Fletcher, we killed Fletcher for that. What if Hartsey pay, takes a pay cut again? Well, if Hartsey had... My, my thing was, at, at that point in time, you had to maintain... In, back, back in the fall, didn't you have to maintain flexibility on trades for somebody? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, like, I mean, he might take a pay cut, but, like, okay, Felino gets done. Zuccarello gets done. By the way, we could question that big time now, in, in my opinion. He would have been so valuable on a good team. But, okay, if those are your two, then I think you got to hang loose with Hartsey to potentially trade him. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't know. It's just, I feel like hockey falls into an old boys club of, well, these guys are my guys. And, you know, you know Dean learned a lesson really, really quickly. You might love them, but they don't love you back. So learning. It's my takeaway. Thoughts. Story of my life. Thoughts are. <laughs> well, yeah, that might be the story of your life from a personal standpoint of view. But the great thing about sports is you can do really mean things and they don't really have lasting impacts. You're just trying to win games. That's all you got to do. <clears throat> no, I think learning is fair. And again, that lends itself to that younger group. I mean, again, you hear about the prospects down in Iowa and this and that. And it's not fair to look at the Iowa team and what they've accomplished or not accomplished this year because half of Iowa is up here in St. Paul, right? So, I mean, you, you definitely have to take that into consideration. Um, it has, it's it's going to be a wobbly couple of years. And I think everybody would have felt better if that had been up front, if Bill Guerin had been very much more upfront about it. I think the whole narrative that, nope, we're still good, we're still competitive. It's like, but are you? And you're not. I mean, you, you should be able to be okay but looking at the way these other teams play, I mean, watching Nashville play and watching Winnipeg, I mean, it's just, you have no shot right now, bud. Like, let's just call it is what it is what it is. I mean, it's it's difficult to watch, but I do think the future is bright. I do believe that. I think with these young guys, yep. again, only time will tell. Um, you talk about Jesper Belstead. I don't hate him staying in Iowa for another year if they think that is the right course of action, right? If they trade Gus and they get a good goalie back and Mark Andre wants to stay or whatever that might look like, I don't hate that necessarily because you look at Yusei Saros and he was stuck down in the AHL for years because Pecorine was was up there, right? So I mean, it doesn't hurt him any, uh, but I agree. I I just it's a long road ahead in general. So what are the expectations, Dex? What? Knowing what we we know now, going into n- next year, it's the cap's going up, but you're still in cap hell. Mm-hmm. Um, h- how have you adjusted or changed, or what's your thought process now on expectations for this team in 2024-25 when training camp opens, or or what's your hope? My hope is that they that they don't end up winning meaningless games. I I really I really just think it's tra- the transition 2.0 starts where the fact that you just you can't you can't really go out and spend, so you can't really make major fixes this roster immediately this summer. They handcuff themselves by giving all the extensions to players we just talked about that they shouldn't yeah. have given. So, you're in a you're in a tough spot again. You can't really fix this team. You got to roll with these guys again. Stockpile your draft picks, stockpile your minor league system. You know, you might be able to make some, you know, trades where it's a classic hockey trade if you're trading one veteran contract for the next veteran contract. But in general, just just transition. Stay on this course, and you're going to be better off it, you know, in, in about a year from now. But until then, you're kind of stuck with this team. That's that's the bed they made with those extensions last year. So I would just stick with the transition. Don't do anything ridiculous. You're going to be out of this cap hell here in a year, and that's kind of what I would like to see happen next year. AJ, what's your thought? kind of the same thing uh next year is like you're gearing up for the show like this is yeah 20 like 25 26 is okay we're setting the pieces the chessboard is set but as soon as that season ticks over you're now out of that big cap hell that you've endured now for a while the game is on like the game is afoot i want you to have an opening of how you're going to attack where you're going to spend money if you look at it the defensive core Past 2025-26, 20, as of right now, involves one person that's up in this main 
Uh, I, I, should, I should say two because LTIR kind of throws things off here. But Jonas Brodin and Jared Spurgeon. Like, mm-hmm. those, are, those are your two guys. Middleton, he's a UFA after next season. Alex Goligoski is an uh, is a UFA after this year. Merrill oh, Faber, you're going. I mean, you're he's not signed, but you're going to absolutely extend him. Yes. Um, but there's openings here that you're going to have to usher in who you're going to bring in, who you're going to bring up. I assume based on the depth of defensemen in this upcoming draft, where depending on how these final game uh, eleven games look, they could probably nab a pretty solid guy to where two years from now he's in that kind of maybe middle mix of that defensive core and then all these other prospects that they've been lauding for the past couple of years in prospect pools are now finally showing up in the Minnesota wild look young and rejuvenated and are, and are playing exciting hockey. So um, transitional 2.0 is probably the way to go, but I just want to see the chess pieces being put in place to really take a stab. Don't be aggressive. The mindset should not be to make the playoffs and make a big run. You've been handcuffed now for however many years we, we see that, like, as soon as you get hurt, you don't have the depth given that cap hell to supply a team that can battle through it. If you're fully healthy, it's one thing, but it's just continuous injury after injury, bad luck, bad stint, we're in a slump, and it's uh, it, it's a tough watch when they are a little shorthanded because they just can't seem to play with even these teams that we're seeing down the stretch rise to the occasion like a Nashville or a Vegas Golden Knights. Mm-hmm. You'd mentioned defense, AJ. What do you guys think about Declan Chisholm? And what do you look at? He's an RFA uh, coming up here. Hard deuces to Goose. I am sorry, but I know Dex was with me waving. But, you know, Goodbye. Declan Chisholm, great name. Uh, but he's also, I've, I've, been, I've liked his game thus far. I think he's yep. really helped John Merrill not look atrocious, which is quite a feat, <laughs> if you ask me. So uh, what do you guys want to do with Declan Chisholm? Do you keep him around? Knowing, again, the prospects that are supposedly in Iowa between the Damon Hunt, the Carson Lambos, the Ryan O'Rourke's, um, those type of guys, what do you guys think? I you definitely him. should keep him around. Yeah, I yeah. think you definitely keep him around. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it, if anything, he's maybe like insurance, bridge insurance, if like you lose Middleton next season in free agency. So, yeah, they, they've done a really good job cultivating those defensemen. And I'd rather I'd rather have – you don't punt on that guy just because you have like prospect pools that are ready. I think you said I'm doing a nice bridge deal, and that also gives you the luxury of, all right, if he tanks and he's not as good as you are, you can easily move on. So, yeah, I think a nice bridge deal, I think that might be honestly one of their top priorities for this year. H, how, how deep is is the defensive uh, depth of talent in in your mind? You're you're more of our uh, prospect expert here. What's the what's the wild defense like as far as the names that Jesse threw out expectation wise in your mind? I Carson Lambos and Ryan O'Rourke. I think I like Ryan O'Rourke is like your blue collar defenseman in my mind. Like that's what he was drafted as. I don't think he's ever going to be like your leading the blue line sort of player. But boy, is he a workhorse muscle. Like he'll block shots, he'll he'll play for the the crest on the front of the jersey. Like this guy bleeds whatever organization he plays for. Love Carson it. Lambos, um, he's got a little more finesse to his game in my mind. But uh, those two guys, I think Ryan O'Rourke maybe just not as flashy. But you're gonna see him in the lineup consistently, and you're gonna be like, you know, I maybe I haven't like brought his name up too much because he hasn't been messing up. Like he'll he'll get to the dirty areas, um, and that's where I think like if they want one more piece. Look at a team like maybe the Winnipeg Jets this year who have been just so stingy defensively, yep. and they're winning games because of how much they frustrate the opposition. They're, and it, it goes to coaching there probably too, but they're so good in their own zone to where they can put up two goals, and they're like, we're in a decent driver's seat to win this game. And that goes back to they have Connor Hellebuck in goal, mm-hmm. um, and that's where down the road Minnesota Wild hope to have a Volstead who's able to do the same thing where – if you get that defensive structure, you already have Kirill up front. Matthew Boldy, I think, is going to eventually have it click and uh, be able to rise to the occasion. I know I hear consistently, <laughs> hopefully. I, that's that's the thing. It, and not do flybys on Biddington in overtime. Yeah, but then you know you, you're you're going to have your uh, Dania Yurov. You're going to have your Liam Ogren. Right. And it, it if you can get the defensive aspect, I think nailed down like. We've seen them play maybe less than flashy hockey for most of the franchise's history. You know, why rebrand if you want to keep playing that brand of hockey? So that's where it comes down to this draft is deeper when it comes to defensemen. Yep. At this rate, you're not going to get one of the top guys, but boy, who knows if something slips. Draft day is always weird. And like, it, it, there's there seems to be a big consensus of like, you know, celebrating is going first, then you have Demidov probably right after. 
But I, uh, you know, the, the Anton Saliev, who I th- I've seen mocked as high as three, is now slipping to maybe like later in that ten spot. Um, there, there's a lot of decent defensemen here, and so if you just kind of complete that puzzle, maybe those names eventually come up, and you have this one solid cohesive defensive uh, unit. Can I say this? I think so. So, and this is a mild, it's a mild hot take. All right. So it's very mild, but I think, I think for Bill Guerin to prove that he has learned what I hope he, he has started to, to learn. I don't think it's a stretch to, to say this. If the wild performs next season as expected, so they're not a train wreck, but they're probably not a playoff team again. Like it's just an okay year. Mm-hmm. I think the, I think the guy to trade at the deadline, no questions asked as much as you might like him. Middleton. Yeah. I don't think that's a hot take. Like as a rental, that dude on a playoff team now would 100% like be coveted. But, but uh, age's point, don't you have enough there be behind him to fill in? By the way, if you want to sign him back, that's cool. You could try to sign him back. But like that to me is the, is the lesson. Can you take a guy that you have developed you know, because with the Sharks, he was just a, a guy. And that you like a lot and say, you know what, dude, sorry, we're trading you because I think you could make a killing. I would do that. Yeah, you don't you don't want to lock him into a new deal. And if if you do make a contract extension, for God's sakes, no no movement clauses. Don't, why why, God, why do we just hand those out? I, I don't I, I don't understand. I'm going to start going so, to church to pray again. Yeah, that. you might have to. I mean, if, if, if he has risen for no movement clauses, I will also see you there. So, um, yeah, in, in general, I, I just don't. don't. Don't Easter. hand out the no movement clauses is all you got to do. Don't do that. Easter roll that rock aside. Jesse, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I don't hate it. I mean, I, I think we had tossed his name out even this year because knowing oh, we, he's the pending free agent. Oh, we right? did. We did. I don't hate we it. Did. I'm okay with it. It's fine. Like, Jake Middleton's a nice defenseman, and he's found a good pairing with Brock Faber, and, and they've done well. But I don't – I'm not attached. I'm not yeah. attached to – you know, they're just guys. They're just exactly. hockey guys. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right. They're not your kids. No. They're, they're not your kids – and they might be nice guys, but you know what? I'm sorry. Tarps off is not a reason to keep a guy. No, I mean, no, find some, somebody some... else. But the promotional shirts, yeah. Judd. The promo shirts. Yeah. Jesse got so, one of those. So, some some kids might need it. I don't think some... it went over well. <laughs> it I think some kids, some kids got actually don't have a no movement clause, though. Like Some kids are like, you know what? Can I get a movement clause on this kid? Can we Can we just <laughs> oh, uh, lift yeah. that one up? The Back right offer, day? that middle kid is real yeah. looking real yeah. spicy. Classic middle kid, right? A classic middle kid. Yeah. So what would you be asking? Like draft um, picks? You or know, what? I would say draft picks. Well, no, not draft picks. That means I'm getting more Then you're getting in, more. Good point. I don't, don't you know, we don't want that. How about Maybe like a cabin. Cap relief. Cap yeah, relief. Cap relief. A little a ca- You want a cabin? I want a cabin. Oh, a cabin. Like well, yeah. you, you are kid, from the north. Nice cabin. That's a lot of work. I was going to say, how about a couple, like, three, like, great restaurants? A couple gift cards, maybe. A couple gift cards. There <laughs> you go. A couple gift cards. He's it's a transaction. Like just I'm just looking low. at this as not like what Jesse would want, but what he would want. <laughs> yes. like, well, so every answer, every want. answer Jesse true. says, Judd's yes. like, no, but I would want this. A cabin. Like, oh. I ain't doing a cabin. <laughs> I ain't doing a cabin, you guys. You know how much work that, that takes? All right. JHS uh, back uh, soon. I'm sure to talk about more about the exploits of the wild for AJ, for Declan, for Jesse. I'm Judd. We'll talk to you later.